Okay, the timer is not on yet, thank God. <laughs> well, thanks, Alex, for the introduction. Um, my name is Eva, managing partner and co-founder of Two Small Fish Ventures. Today, I would like to share with you that network effect is your asset. So what is network effect? It's the value that, of your, pro that your product will increase as more people use it. So you think about Facebook, Twitter, uh, Airbnb, and Uber. These are all network effect-based companies. Network effect is also the building blocks for machine learning and blockchain. So why is it important to you? Well, it is the most uh, valuable asset that you can have in your product. It increases defensibility and allows you to build more business models as your network scale. So where do I learn about all these things? Well, I was the head of community at Wattpad. I scaled a community from tens of, million, uh, tens of thousands to tens of millions. And after I left Wattpad, I became an angel investor, focused only on network effect-based companies. Throughout the years, I have invested and advised more than 10 companies. These companies, including Wattpad, all exhibit the same pattern uh, when it comes to start and scale the network effect in their products. So I summarize that pattern into this framework. Network effect equal asset. So what does that mean? Let's start with letter A in asset. It stands for atomic unit. It is the small, smallest product unit of which your, pr your users will gather around. So think about Facebook. A post is the atomic unit. Twitter is a tweet. Uber is a ride. And for Wattpad, the atomic unit is a story. By defining the atomic unit in your product, you will then be able to define the type of network you're about to build. So for Wattpad, with a uh, story as the atomic unit, it allows us to build a social network for storytelling. Now, once you have defined the atomic unit in your product, then now you're facing the most daunting task of all, and that is to kickstart the network. Why is it daunting? Because it's a chicken and egg problem. Think about it in Wattpad. When we first started, there was no story. So who's going to come on Wattpad to read? When there aren't any reader, who's going to come share the story? So, the f so right now, what you need to do is move to letter S in asset, and that is seed your supply side. Wattpad did that by importing over 20,000 public domain stories such as Pr Pride and Prejudice, Moby Dick, onto the platform. The idea is to allow some readers to find some stories to read on our platform and build the habit of reading on a Wattpad. And um, by doing that, <laughs> Uh, that, that will help us to start attracting more re uh, writers to come and share their original work. So now moving on to the second S in asset, that is scale your demand side. Once you get the supply side taken care of, you really need to shift your focus in building your demand. So Wattpad did that by building mobile apps for all the mobile devices. We start off with Java apps on the feature phones, later release our iOS app, and then our Android app. These mobile apps allow our readers to read wherever and whenever they like. And we also develop a suite of very engaging features for people to read more on Wattpad. Now, with more people reading on Wattpad, it attracts more writers to come and share their works. Why? Because that's where they can find the audience for their story. So now that you have got the supply side going, your demand side going, you really need to move on to letter E, and that's enlarging your network effect coefficient. I define network effect coefficient as the product of the number of users, the frequency of the engagement, and the number of connections they can have on your network. So basically, you are looking at the volume of a cuboid. With the number of users as the length, with the number of engagement or frequency of engagement as your width, and the number of connections as the height, you can see that the bigger the cuboid, the stronger your network effect. So think about all the comments that's being posted on Wattpad and all the interactions that have been made between readers and writer. All these connections have allowed Wattpad to become a very strong and irreplaceable network for storytellers. 
So even if someone wants to uh, clone Wattpad with the exact same functionality, it's very difficult for them to replicate the same network. Once you have gone through the ASSE, the last letter is T, and that's track your proprietary insight. Wattpad made headlines on PerezHilton.com in 2010 with the proprietary data set. How did that happen? There's a feature on Wattpad called casting. It allows writers to put together their dream cast for their stories as if it were made into movies. So some writers would cast Harry Styles as a vampire, and then Taylor Swift as the vampire slayer. So it's a very fun and engaging feature for our community. So one day I decided to look into the data set and say, let's see who are these uh, popular ce celebrities being cast on Wattpad. Of course, the top 10 list is basically a reflection of pop culture at the time. And then eventually that list made headlines on PerezHilton.com. What I'm trying to tell you here is that once you have a large network going, your proprietary data set will become very valuable to other companies, just like the casting data on Wattpad, which paves ways for Wattpad to grow beyond uh, a social network for storytelling. It allows Wattpad to transform into an entertainment company. In the last few years, popular stories on Wattpad has already been turned into published books, movies, and TV shows across the world. So in closing, I just need you to remember network effect equals asset, and network effect is an asset. Thank you. Questions? If it's a chicken and egg question, mm -hmm. and both the supply side and getting the demand side start with the letter S, why did you choose to put supply before demand? Ah, that's an excellent question, because that's a pattern that I've observed. It's extremely important that you have to seat the supply side first. Without anything to consume, you will never have any consumer to come on your platform. So seeding your supply is important, but you have to switch your focus once you get some supply going, and you have to look at scaling your demand. So that's the, uh, the, the second S. I just seeded that question for you. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much. In your experience, do you find that creating these sort of effects are the same in B2B and B2C markets? That's a very great question. The, all, the companies that I have advised and invested in, they are actually not just uh, consumer internet companies. I have invested in uh, scientific uh, health type products. I've also invested in B2B networks. Uh, certainly, I have uh, looked at blockchain companies. I've just made an investment in blockchain. They are actually all the same. When you look at a network, it's extremely important you get the atomic unit, supply side, demand side, build the engagement, and track your data. That's just the pattern I've seen over and over again. This gentleman right there. Thank you. Just to add uh, to your supply side and your atomic unit, what I'm finding is so like with the B2B space and the whole idea of the lead and startup and the iteration, uh, with the atomic, you know, how important it is to have clear hypotheses? When it's it's very important. Right, because you can't just be on a Rolodex and keep running and running around. Well, I think you know, when you're looking at uh, a network, what I'm trying to paint here is that the atomic unit is basically your cornerstone to build engaging feature. So if you're just talking about, oh, I'm connecting company A and, and company B, what are you talking about? Uh, the, you're co sharing company information, which you literally have no engagement because the information will never change unless they change the address, right? So you need to look at the atomic unit of your product that, is, that will drive engagement. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. One last question. This gentleman. Hi, I wanted to ask, um, 
Did you plan for the type of network you were going to build? So for example, there are peer-to-peer -peer networks, group-based networks, and so on. Did you plan for Wattpad to be um, a peer-to-peer -peer seemingly kind of network up front? Um, when it comes to network, I just personally, from my experience, is that if everyone on the network are actually on the same footing, is actually the most scalable. Because once you kind of define something like you are superior and you are just a peasant in the in the network, then the dynamic is just going to be so, you know, unequal that you may not be able to foster the environment that you really need. So I hope that answers your question. It's like, did we plan it? Uh, uh, as peers to peer meetings, everyone can come onto Wattpad. Yes, we plan it that way so that everyone can come and enjoy the platform. Thank you so much. You're very welcome.